Hello and welcome. Thanks, Doug. First up in the paleontology news is a remarkable study that has looked at the anatomy of various dinosaur feet in order to work out their ecologies. Examining the keratinized toe pads, the foot scales, how the foot joints move, and the shapes of the claws, the researchers were able to assess how well various flying theropods could grasp things and also how well they could run, which in turn tells us a lot about their ecology and what they fed on. Using laser-stimulated fluorescence, the soft tissue structures of various theropod feet were revealed and were able to be examined in detail, with some absolutely stunning figures showing the extent of soft tissue here. Well, as you can imagine, some very interesting things were discovered. Firstly, flying theropods from the Jurassic, including Anchionis and Archaeopteryx, were found to be relatively quite ground-dwelling animals, while later, early Cretaceous flyers diversified into a range of aerial habits, from generalists such as Confucius Ornus, to the climbing specialist Fortungo Avis. Archaeopteryx itself, as well as the early Cretaceous Sapionis, are also reported to have complex ecologies unlike those of any modern birds, which is very intriguing. Interestingly, the small non-avian flying theropod Microraptor was found to have a specialised raptorial lifestyle, which the authors note as unexpected. It had quite hawk-like characteristics, and seems to suggest that some non-bird flying theropods actually had the specialised ecologies of certain modern birds. So it's a really fascinating paper overall, revealing so much more about the lifestyles of these dinosaurs. Also in the news is another exciting development involving Microraptor as it happens. Looking at the holotype specimen of Microraptor, paleontologists noticed the tiny foot bones of a prehistoric mammal could be seen inside the body cavity of this small dromaeosaurid. Previous studies have found that Microraptor also fed on birds, fish, and lizards, and so adding this mammal into the list of things it fed on suggests that this dinosaur had quite a generalist diet, and they argue against previous suggestions that Microraptor was adapted to hunting birds in trees and that it was a specialised fish hunter. The paper also notes that it cannot be said for certain if any of these animals were actually hunted or just scavenged, but they say Microraptor likely did both when it had the opportunity. The lead author of this paper is paleontologist Dr. David Hone, who we actually met and interviewed recently in an episode of Boneheads, so be sure to watch that if you'd like to hear his thoughts on a recent Tyrannosaur discovery. Finally for the paleo news, we've got the naming and description of a new large crocodiliform from Brazil. Coming from late Cretaceous aged rocks, the formation it's from is well known for its crocodiliform material, but until now the only reported group here were a clade known as the Notosuchians. Although the fossils known for this new animal are quite limited, comprising a partial skull roof, it's enough for the paleontologists to name it as a new species, Titanochampsa iorii, and to also classify it outside Notosuchia, instead placing it as a Eusuchian, the group that includes modern crocodilians and various stem groups. So Titanochampsa adds to the known diversity of this late Cretaceous formation, and also has a very cool name. In addition, it's estimated to have grown between about 3 and almost 6 metres in length, and is suggested to have been semi-aquatic, a unique ecology among the primarily terrestrial crocodiliforms found at this locality. Anyway, that's it for this week, back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for 7 Days of Science this week. I do hope you enjoyed, and... Ooh.